Hello everyone and welcome to HFSS Theater, our first virtual conference event. My name is Dennis Soldo and I'm a director for a North America team of high frequency application engineers. Today I will be talking to you about best practices for maximizing HFSS performance for package, PCB and system simulations. Let's kick it off by taking a closer look at our agenda for today. We'll start by taking a look at customer industry trends and typical design challenges. The first part of our talk will present you with several customers' test cases highlighting HFSS solver speed with unmatched accuracy. In the second part of our talk, we are going to push the boundaries of HFSS capacity to the next level by introducing you to the HFSS 3D layout workflow. Finally, we will wrap up our talk with the introduction of ANSYS Cloud and High Performance Computing. ANSYS technology is used across many industries. We have customers in high-tech industry, 5G, and all the way to aerospace, defense, and automotive. One type of design that is very common across all of these industries and applications are packages, PCBs, and connector designs. Well, the most common design challenges many of our customers face are short design cycles and high demand for new products. Every upcoming new design is made to be smaller, more portable, and it operates at much faster speeds. On top of everything, our customers are dealing with very tight schedules Everything is pretty much, or was, due yesterday. In order to meet such a demanding short design cycles, engineers select to rely on simulations more and more. Simulations, software must be easy to use, must have capacity, speed, and most importantly, accuracy. Complex designs must be sold in 3D. So 3D must be available for all design engineers. Each design will go through several iteration stages prior to its final release. And automation is a key part of this entire workflow. Creating simulation models should not be a time consuming task because Engineering time is best spent in design exploration. When presented with access to different simulation software, customers have their own expectations. Ease of use and capacity is certainly one of the key requirements for deploying simulation workflow. HFSS 3D layout workflow which was specifically developed for layered structures, such as packages and PCBs, provides a scalable process that goes from a single component to a full system. Accuracy is undeniably one of the most important requirements and could easily be listed as number one item. Industry proven HFSS solver provides unprecedented full wave 3D accuracy for solving most complex high-speed designs. Finally, our customers need speed and scalability to meet these tight deadlines. This can be accomplished by making an easy access to high-performance technology locally or on their own cluster or cloud. In summary, our customers are looking for more capacity, more efficiency with a proven 
HFSS accuracy. Before we propose a solution for going forward, let's take a look at two different types of models our customers are constantly using. They both represent 3D, but certainly for different applications. On the left, we have mechanical CAD, or commonly called MCAD. The typical geometries, such as this waveguide, filter, or even connector, would come from a MCAD source, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, CATIA, or PTC. On the right side, we have most common electrical CAD or ECAD layouts, such as packages or PCBs. These ECAD layouts usually originate from input source such as Cadence, Mentor, Zook, and Altium. As you can see, both represent 3D but for different applications. ANSYS provides unique environment for simulating both. You have HFSS MCAD interface for mechanical CAD files and HFSS 3D layout editor interface for electrical CAD. Well, what was HFSS before 3D layout? For the past two decades, our customers have been using HFSS MCAD workflow. Many of you may recall using a standalone version of uh, ENS of Links, or in more recent years, SI Wave exports, which you use to generate 3D model or 3D MCAD HFSS project. You are faced with a several different export options. We started with 5 to 10, then in the mid 2000s ended up with 15 different ACES export options. And in the most recent release, we have a 25 different ACES export options for creating a 3D MCAD project. These options were there for one main reason ensure meshing success. This MCAD workflow has been limited to very few critical nets, and it has also been limited by the capacity of mechanical CAD interface. This was not net or intuitive layer stack up driven workflow, and automation parameterization was to say at least non-existent. Shown here are just a couple of examples of those HFSS MCAD models generated 10, 15 years ago. In 2014 was the year when HFSS 3D layout released. This new interface was specifically developed for 3D elect electrical layouts that are net driven, stack up driven, very intuitive. And this editor provides ease of use of automating ports and boundaries creation via built-in automation utilities for any package or PCB layout. Our goal was to help our customers increase the efficiency in going from a layout to full 3D HFSS simulations. Upon its successful release in the year 2014, the first most common question asked from our customer was, is HFSS 3D layout really an HFSS? Customers welcomed a new GUI, which was much easier to use and more intuitive to all ECAD or layout typical SI engineers, but no one was willing to give up HFSS accuracy. We at ANSYS introduced a new patented fast fee initial meshing technology, which provides faster simulation runtimes. We took the input from our customers very, very seriously and ran 
extensive set of different test cases to show that there is no loss of accuracy at that identical HFSS 3D full wave solar was used in both environments, HFSS 3D MCAD and HFSS 3D layout. In this example, we tested a typical IC package layout and did simulation in both 3D MCAD and 3D layout and obtained virtually identical results from both. The reason for that is there's only one HFSS solver used that provides this level of accuracy. As I mentioned earlier in our agenda, in the first part of our talk, we will present you with our several customers' test cases to highlight HFSS 3D layout workflow and accuracy of HFSS solver. We live in a data-driven world. Recently, I've heard a saying that uh, data is a new oil because of high demand for it. New data centers will operate at 400 gigabit ethernet. And new level, multi-level multi pen force signaling is required to satisfy the need for these faster rise times. Here's an example from one of our customers. Socio Next, a PEM4 package that enables 56 gigabits per second data rates, which, by the way, also define new set of challenging design requirements. We are looking at a highly complex 14 layer package with extreme levels of 3D complexity, which also includes micro VS. There are several critical parts of this design that we are going to show you in the upcoming slides, but definitely high-speed IOs are one of them. Typical metrics that our customers are looking to address are insertion and return loss, but one of the most important metrics here is a tight crosstalk design requirements. When it comes to simulations, in simulating this particular complex package. We can approach it from two different levels. Usually, our customer would do a critical nets analysis. We, they would select a few nets, and this is usually a method used for doing fast iterations. However, these high-speed designs for a final sign-off Customers need to do a full package analysis. For both of these approaches, we have to consider the model size, model complexity, our hardware availability, how many cores and RAM do we have available to solve such a complex design in 3D? Well, there's a one common misconception out there in the field, and that is, that HFSS cannot mesh or solve the entire package. This is the reason why we turn, decided to turn the tables here and present you with the full package simulation first. I'm excited to announce that this entire complex 14 layer package can be meshed and sold fully in HFSS 3D layout. This complex package has 184 ports and it was sold on our cluster of machines using 128 cores in just under 18 hours. The best part of this, it took about only 30 gigabytes of RAM distributed evenly across each of the eight distributed tasks. The key takeaway here is that HFSS can mesh and solve entire package. Well, as a next step, we are going to focus on the critical parts of our design and look at the high-speed critical nets. For many years, 
our customers would take a very cautious and conservative approach when it comes to creating a 3D model that is suitable for HFSS simulations. Shown here is the most common, we call it a legacy type of a cutout, where we would create our own polygon. And the whole idea here is to minimize the complexity and the size of the geometry that will be meshed and sold for one many reason. Save some RAM and to make simulations faster. However, however, with the introduction of HFSS 3D layout, we introduced a new ANSYS best known methods. And one of the most common is to use a very simple rectangular cutout in order to incorporate entire power ground structure that will be used as a return path in this model. Presented here are two different model sizes sold on the identical hardware. And you can see that the runtime is nearly identical. We can call it a one hour runtime, 15 minutes versus 68. Even the RAM is very comparable, 3.75 gigabytes gigabytes versus 5.5 gigabytes evenly distributed across each of the eight tasks. Well, so our next step is going to be to take a look at the results to see if there's any difference in results. Well, if you take a top-down view on this particular package, we identified one net, one high-speed differential pair that is positioned and routed very close to the edge of our boundary in our legacy cutout approach. We compare the results from one run to another, and sure enough, notice a minor difference in the differential return loss. And it can be easily explained by saying that these are indeed geometrically different models. As such, different boundaries was applied at the edges, causing us some minor difference in the differential uh, S parameters. The key takeaway here is to make sure that we preserve the real nature of the package or a PCB layout that we are simulating here. So the advice is to go to to go with uh, best known methods pure rectangular cutout because there's really no major difference in a RAM consumption or simulation runtime. We have introduced you to the new ECAD driven 3D layout workflow. And as mentioned in our agenda, our next part of presentation will, will be about HFSS accuracy same time, we are going to show you the importance of the results and type of the results you need to get out of your simulation software. HFS is known for its industry proven accuracy based on most advanced automatic adaptive mesh refinement. This conformal and non-uniform mesh is automatically created and refined per each adaptive pass according to true electromagnetics to the electrical performance of the device. This automatic, at the same time, very fast and efficient, highly accurate approach ensures the simulations are correct the first time. As presented in this Example, we usually start with a very coarse initial mesh. And you engineers and our customers, you don't have to be a machine expert because this is being done automatically and accurately for you. Starting from a very coarse initial mesh to a very dense and well-refined adaptive refined mesh at the end of your solution process. Here's the first example that I would like to share with you, and this will take us back a good decade and a half ago, back in 2004. 
This is a 3.2 gigabits per second package measurement correlation done with our colleagues and Intel Platform Architecture Group in Beaverton, Oregon. In this particular example, we obtain a great correlation of HFSS results to a measured results. And you see that, you know, results correlate very well up to a five gigahertz. And the main reason for that is the measurements were only available up to a five gigahertz back then. However, our customers were looking not only at S parameters, but also at fields. By plotting the fields and taking a look at these fields, we noticed additional edge coupling in the paragraph structures, and which was caused by extra inductance in the power delivery loop. So here's a great example of the benefits of both, not only S parameters, but also a fields that you're getting out of the HFSS. Yet again, this was 2004, and this was 3.2 gigabits per second, gigabits per second package. Fast forward 16 years later, we are in 2020, and we are talking about 112 gigabits per second package PCB connector correlation from our customer Socionex. We talked about their package simulations earlier. Well, now this package is merged on the board and routed all the way to a connector at the edge of the board. So it's a quite complex assembly, package PCB connector. And we are looking at S parameters and phase. And once again, our HFSS simulation results shown here in red correlate extremely well with blue line of lab measurements. Today, measurements were only available up to 40 gigahertz, but once again, the correlation is top notch. It's even more impressive if you look at the phase at the bottom. Phases for both measured and simulated correlate quite well. Well, there's one question being asked. We're looking at those parameters. How about that most important design requirement of this design application, and that is a crosstalk? Well, our first step is going to be to take a look at the differential foreign crosstalk for the nets of interest. Here, we are plotting the differential foreign crosstalk for RX pair and uh, our customer noticed quite high differential foreign crosstalk. The questions can be asked, what is the cause for this crosstalk? We certainly cannot give you an answer just by looking at the S parameters. But if you remember from a minute or two ago, how our colleagues and customers in Intel were looking at their results back in 2004, well, we can use the same approach. Let's view the physics inside of your device. And let's take a look into the fields. Displayed here are the field plots of surface currents on this particular model. By animating the fields and looking how they propagate, the conclusion can be made that the cavity formed by the back drill excited additional surface currents on the internal power planes, resulting in that high crosstalk on the neighboring pairs, which was also seen from S parameters. This is another great example of the benefits and the need to look not only at S parameters, but also at the fields. Well, in the next section of our presentation, we will introduce you to the new levels of HFSS capacity. We are going to push the boundaries of HFSS complexity and capacity via HFSS 3D layout workflow. As a yet another quick reminder, let's see what was HFSS capacity before 3D layout. 
by now, you're well aware of HFSS mechanical workflow and its limitations. Limitations of doing few critical nets only, limitation of its editor capabilities, no automation, no parameterization. Shown here are another few examples of the models sold from a decade or two ago in HFSS MCAD interface. What's very common to many of these models, you can identify one, maybe two differential pairs. Or in the examples to the left, we see a three very short and very simple differential trace routing. This was HFSS capacity before 3D layout. We are 2020 today, and this is HFSS 3D layout capacity today. As a first step in building this complex test case, we are going to put full SOD module in HFSS. To make this design even more complex, we are going to add two layer DRAM packages on both top of the board and the bottom of the board. So we'll end up with eight packages on a SOD in PCB. Of course, this connection, this merging process will be done in a very straightforward and automated name-based pair pin component mapping enabled via numerous built-in utilities inside of 3D layout. These eight two-layer DRAM packages will be merged on top and bottom of PCB. Ease of use, scalability, automation are certainly several key customer requirements for using HFSS 3D layout workflow. We have taken that into account by introducing an automated ways of merging these package on PCBs by introducing the hierarchical fully independent stack ups that are parameterizable. This will become very, very efficient for hierarchical meshing for these 3D placed multiple ECAD designs. Shown here are the cross-sectional view of this merge design and these packages have independent stack ups. The PCB the bottom has its own stack up. <laughs> as another example. of 3D layout workflow is um, how to check connectivity of, of well, once you're in 3D layout, you can easily click on any of the net. Uh, right mouse click, select physically connected. Fully, and then fully DC connected net will be highlighted in red. It will show you the path, you know, full DC path going from a bump of the package all the way to the, you know, connector pin on a PCB. You know, this will be your full path. Um, this fully merged SODIM design has been sold on this cloud across eight nodes for, with a total of 128 cores. We enable the uh, one byte of data per each package, resulting in 64 active signals for a total of 128 ports. And this fully merged design sold in seven hours. What's really impressive about this runtime is the initial mesh took only 45 minutes, two and a half hours of adaptive meshing, and three and a half hours of distributed frequency sweep. Total matrix size was about 21 million of unknowns. 
and at 30, only 32.75 gigabytes of RAM required per each distributed task. Quite, quite impressive runtimes that highlight the capacity at the same time, you know, of the both HVSS 3D layout editor and a HVSS solver. We will <clears throat> continue with uh, assembling our full 3D system and by combining and introducing a connector and a portion of a motherboard on which this connector will sit. To enable this, we will introduce you with the concept of HFSS 3D component. HFSS 3D component are similarly the equivalent and think of them as equivalent of a circuit components. You know, these are sort of like a you know black boxes or models that contains the geometry, excitations, material properties, boundary conditions. If need be, they can be IP protected. This concept of HFSS 3D component exists in MCAD HFSS workflow for several versions and uh, there's an extensive 3D component library that comes with the basic installation of HFSS product line. The benefits of this 3D component workflow is that these models can be used amongst different teams, can be used across different design engineers, shared between partners, different users. In our case, we are going to introduce an MCAD connector model as a 3D component that will be placed on a small portion of our cutout of a motherboard. So that will be our assembly model connector on a board. All of this will be done in the most friendly and most automated way, the best editor made for this application that is HFSS 3D layout editor specifically made for these packages, PCBs and the connectors. But now you see it's yet another benefits of introducing the MCAD geometries in 3D layout. And this 3D component concept is something new in HFSS 3D layout. This will be part of a 2020 R2 release and you can easily go to a layout option and import 3D component. This will import our complex 204 pin SODIM connector with its own net names, material properties as a separate 3D component. And it will be merged automatically our motherboard. So what you're looking here is the merged MCAD and EK design connector sitting on the top of the motherboard. To make this assembly model even more complete, we will plug in that SODIM PCB with those eight packages it will be side plug-in to our 204-pin connector that sits on top of the motherboard. So in the end, we're going to end up with a quite complex assembly model that contains and excites eight bytes of data for a total of 64 DDR nets and 128 ports that goes all the way from a DRAM package down to SODIM PCB that is plugged in into a MCAD connector that sits on the motherboard and it, the signal will be routed all the way to the central location of our board where the VGA sits. This is going to be a single assembly model and it will be meshed and sold as a single finite element method domain of both ECAD and MCAD designs. This assembly model will definitely highlight and push the new levels of capacity 
of HFSS 3D layout editor, and also new levels of capacity of HFSS solver capabilities. Well, before we launch, launch our simulation, let's take a virtual walk or a virtual tour through our system. We're going to start from a DRM packages going down to SODIM board. We are looking at a top-down view where four of the packages sits. Remember, we have identical four at the bottom. Please note the levels of complexity of these packages. These power and ground planes are highly complex with all the cutouts in them, and we are going to preserve all the 3D nature of it. There will be no geometry simplifications or modifications. This particular SODM with eight packages is plugged in into our connector. You can see all these 204 pins of the connector that are sitting on top of the portion of our motherboard and the rest of nets are routed in the middle of the board where this particular BGA sits. You may notice all the different RLC components that are imported in both you know, SODIM and motherboard, and all of those resistor, capacitor, and inductive networks will be taken into account, and their appropriate values will be written and used in HFSS simulation. We finally have our full 3D assembly model ready to be simulated. Once the model is submitted for simulation, you will notice several progress bars going on simultaneously. And these progress bars highlight the spiralization of mesh generation. As mentioned earlier, by having a hierarchical design approach for these ECAD and MCAD designs. We benefit from it by introducing a parallelization in polygon pre-processing and mesh generation. For instance, SODIM with eight packages, all those packages along with the board, the ECAD facetting and bolognization will be done in parallel. So this will provide a huge time savings. This is the reason why you see, you know, three to four to six different progress bars at the bottom right. Similarly, at the bottom left, we have a connector that sits on yet another motherboard, which is a MCAD sitting on top of the ECAD model. And MCAD faceting and surface generation can also be done in parallel. To summarize, both ECAD and MCAD domain pre-processing and meshing can be done in parallel. We will put this full assembly model on our identical hardware we use so far, and here are the full assembly simulation summary results. This single FEM domain of multiple ECADs and MCAD design sold in flat 34 hours using 128 cores. Let's take a look at the, some of the very impressive details of this simulation runtime. One hour, 10 minutes of initial meshing, close to nine hours of adaptive and a 24 hours of frequency distributed sweep for a total of close to 48 million of unknowns. Well, such a complex design did not necessarily require a ton of RAM. This was done in a distributed fashion with 116 gigabytes of RAM per each of six distributed tasks. So this particular model, once again, highlights HFSS 3D layout editor capacity and new capabilities and new capacity of HFSS solver. 
Well, our next step will be to view the results. And just like our customers, we are presenting you with S parameters here. And we are talking, we are looking at the two bytes of uh, insertion loss and return loss data here to the right. But similarly, you know, we can look at the specific fields here at the bottom left. There's a plot of current distribution on a motherboard reference plane underneath the connector with all 64 nets excited. Sure enough, you can see how the current is spreading on a first neighboring reference plane disassembly model. So, so far, we have introduced you to several benefits of HVSS 3D layout workflow, but we have, say, we have saved the best for last. 3D layout editor allows you to directly import IBIS driver receiver model by eliminating the need for separate schematic entry. Shown here are IBIS models connected directly to package input pins on a motherboard. Of course, this import and connection is achieved via intelligent and automate, automatic pin ma mapping capability. Messaging here is that you can run full transient simulations directly from 3D layout editor. This will also allow you to perform a push excitation operation by calculating field excitations directly based on these inputs for transient response. Once you close this loop, you can view the excited fields in the entire system. As many of you know, science will say, show me, and I believe. I'm excited to inform you and share with you our new post-processing capabilities enabled via Inside product. First, at the bottom right, you see a full system E fields from a side view going all the way from a SODIM card plugged in into a connector you see fields propagating through a connector housing down to a motherboard. To the left is just a cut plane view of E field created by Ensight for top right 2D RAM modules that are being cited for a total of two bytes of data. So we're talking about 16 nets. Quite powerful post processing capabilities. But once again, let's view the physics inside of the system. Site directly imports simulation results and can create new variables based on these by using its separate variable calculator. Here we are taking a pretty much a virtual walk through the entire system and through different cut planes. And site has quite powerful feature uh, options to create separate clip planes, clip lines, volume rendering, and surface flow, which lets you see the entire field and explore these data visually. The best part of it is you can really impress not only your team members, your manager, your vendors, by creating a customized images and movies. After taking a closer look and exploring your simulation data, you will have a new insight to share and then clearly and effectively sell you your new design recommendation. In the last part of our today's presentation, we'll talk about Insys Cloud and the improvements in HFSS solver technology via direct matrix solver. HFSS Direct Matrix Solver is a mature technology developed in-house by Insys. It has more than 20 years of industry-proven accuracy. It's reliable, robust, and scalable direct sparse matrix solver is very effective for a complex models with a large number of ports or excitations. 
And this is certainly what we have in uh, almost every single SI application. You have seen models today from a full assembly with 128 ports. Direct matrix solver is very efficient with S matrix only approach. It also has shared memory, multi-threading, and also distributed memory parallelization enabled via MPI. On top of it, memory forecasting and tracking capability are critical to items for efficient automatic HPC implementation. I hope that some of you had the opportunity to attend a talk on HFSL solver technology earlier today in our HFSS booth. Shown here is the summary of several HFSS solver improvements with a specific focus on distributed memory matrix, DMM solver, that was also released, coincidentally or not, back in 2014, the year when HFSS 3D layout was also born. This HFSS distributed memory matrix solver is a memory saving technology that distributes a single HFSS solution that consists of both adaptive meshing refinement and also frequency sweeps across multiple nodes via MPI. Due to its distributed capacities, DMM significantly reduces memory requirements for each machine. Over the last five to six years, there has been several key improvements in HFSS DMM solver technologies, starting with the auto HPC, S parameters matrix only, to our introduction of multi-level distribution of both memory and matrix, distributed matrix assembly, field recovery, and in particular, in the last couple of releases, we have tremendously improved distributed frequency sweep efficiency and reduced memory footprint for distributed solver. The key takeaway here is that distributed, HFSS distributed memory matrix solver provides access to more memory and cores. In the final part of our talk, we will introduce you to ANSYS Cloud. Many enterprises today are shifting to our cloud computing to eliminate the cost of on-premise hardware and software infrastructure. Connecting to ANSYS Cloud enables organizations to implement high fidelity simulation much faster via high performance computing. ANSYS Cloud relies on Microsoft Azure and solves can be done directly from a desktop app application. ANSYS Cloud in particular is highly optimized for ANSYS Solver. The hardware use is of a high quality with dual E5 3.2 gigahertz CPUs, high memory bandwidth, and in particular, InfiniBand High Performance Interconnect. We have deployed ANSYS Cloud across seven different Azure data centers across the globe. Three of these data centers are located in North America, two of them in Europe, and two in Asia. To simulate EM designs in ANSYS Cloud, users need a license of either HFSS and a subscription to the ANSYS Cloud service and a pool of AUs, ANSYS Elastic Units. These AUs offer a cost-effective model to overcome the problem of um, limited computer resources or short-term work crunches. This is a pool of AUs available customers that are consumed when a job is submitted from a local workstation hosting a seat of your EM simulation software such as HFSS. The number of AUs consumed depends on the cloud hardware configuration, 
solver type and overall runtime. I'm excited to announce that starting 2020 R2, customers will be able to bring their own existing license to be used on ANSYS Cloud. ANSYS Electronics Desktop, or AEDT, offers users a different ways to submit jobs to a cloud. They can submit it via simple GUI inside of ADT that is linked to Azure for remote solving. For instance, just directly from your HFSS 3D layout editor, you can right mouse click on analysis and choose the option select submit to cloud. And customers will be able to pick between four different configurations, small, medium, large, and extra large. Each of these configuration has one, two, eight, or 16 nodes, where each node has 16 cores. As you can see, we have different amount of RAM for each configuration. HFSS has been on cloud since 2019 R2. Late last year, we also added Maxwell and Q3D Extractor. And with 2020R1, iSpec ADT is also part of ANSYS cloud solution. Second way to submit job to a cloud is via built-in unified job scheduler. And this is something that many of you may be familiar with. When you launch ADT, ANSYS Electronics Desktop, and click on the simulation toolbar, by clicking the scheduler button, this new we will come up that will allow you to go through the couple of easy steps of selecting and submitting a job. This same scheduler we can be used to select to submit a job not only to ANSYS Cloud, but to your own cluster, to your own private LSF cluster, Windows HPC, or a private cloud. This GUI will walk you through uh, four easy steps of project selection. Then from a configuration pull down menu, you will have the option of selecting one of those four configurations, small, medium, large, or extra large. You will name your job accordingly, and you will be able to monitor uh, the progress of your simulation on a cloud. Users can submit and simulate multiple electromagnetic designs running concurrently in a cloud. By having a ANSYS Cloud subscription, users will be notified by email when job starts and completes. And furthermore, to enable this collaboration, a remote access allows users to share their designs stored in the cloud with other subscribers. Shown here is the portal view of ANSYS Cloud, where you can monitor the progress of your, of your cloud job, share the job with other users. And also, once the simulation is done, results can be automatically downloaded to a local workstation and saved in a specified directory. Well, we came to the end of our today's talk. I hope that you enjoy material and examples we share with you today. We have shown you how HFSS is enabling customer success by solving one of the most complex and most demanding 3D designs while providing unmatched true 3D full wave accuracy. We push the boundaries of HFSS by introducing you to HFSS 3D layout workflow, which provides ease of use and has a new levels of capacity going from a single component all the way to a full 3D system assembly. Automation and parameterization capabilities are included in HFSS 3D layout workflow. Long meshing and sold times are things of the past.
latest HFSS technology and improvements in HFSS distributed solver enabled via HPC allows you to solve new complex of 3D designs within just a few hours. On top of this, HFSS solar breakthroughs are available not only on your local machines or your private cluster, but also on ANSYS Cloud, which provides incredible time savings for these simulations. I personally thank you for your attention and your time today. And I thank you for this opportunity to share this technical material with you. We are looking forward to you using ANSYS simulations more, and we look forward to hearing back from you soon. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Thank you.